much noise drowning out the news. Talking heads, broadcast messages, press releases. They're telling you their side, but you just want the facts. And that's why you come to me. I give you the statistics without spin. Out of 116 million working age Nigerians, 35.5 million are employed full time. That's 30%. I give you the context. I give you the history. I fight fake news with facts. Can you okay? No, Kayode, I will. I will let you talk. Kayode, Kayode, I will let you talk if you let me talk. Kayode. That's why more and more Lagosians are tuning in. Half a million Lagosians, 720,000, 970,000, over one million Lagosians. They know that if you give me your afternoon, I will give you hard facts. No, no, I am Sandra Ezekwasili, and these are your hard facts. First hard fact of the day, 393 confirmed. COVID cases yesterday. Lagos State had the second highest number of cases with 86. FCT was uh, first with 121. Edo, Delta and Rivers rounded up at the uh, top five. Uh, But just because the numbers came down yesterday doesn't mean that they will keep going down if we don't keep taking our precautions. Please limit your movement when you must go out to work or to buy essentials. Please wear a mask and keep a distance from people people huh? and wash and sanitize your hands and of course get vaccinated Vaughn you just heard her give you the news at three yes our amiable news reader she just got her first dose hey I'm very happy when like people around me get vaccinated so it's amazing congratulations Vaughn uh same as my chief of staff I told you about him yesterday who got vaccinated as well. Uh, Yeah, you can be like them and go and get vaccinated as well. Just go to the nearest primary health center and uh, get your first dose. For your second dose, go to the one where you got your first dose. If you've gotten AstraZeneca, don't go and get Moderna. If you get Moderna, don't go and get AstraZeneca. That's how it works. One million negotiations cannot be wrong. Thank you for listening to Hard Facts. I have a great show for you, starting with the big three. Let's talk about uh, Gombe State Governor saying that if each state retains its own VAT revenue, his government will no longer be able to pay salaries. Then let's talk about Governor Somolu signing the anti-open grazing law. And then let's talk about Femi Adeshino saying the president isn't interested in naming and shaming funders of terrorism. Today is Tuesday, so we're going to bring you community review report as always. But at five o'clock, I'll take you to Edo State, where they have new rules about COVID-19 vaccinations. Proof of vaccination is now required in Edo State to visit a government office or to go to public events. I'm going to be talking to the Edo State government's chief enforcer of these rules. Don't miss that conversation at 5 o'clock. I promise you'll like it. As usual, news updates will come your way at the top of every hour on the hour. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. Let's get into today's Big Three. This is the Big Three. The Big Three. On the hard facts. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. Should the state governments be relying on revenue from other states to pay salaries? Do you support the new Lagos anti open grazing law? And should the government name and shame funders of terror? Those are your big three. Lagos, let's talk. The Gombe state governor says without VAT from other states, he'll be unable to pay salaries. That's our first story. The VAT battle is still raging. We talked about it yesterday at 5 o'clock. I had uh, Chaiwo Yedele with us. He's at PwC. Uh, We also had Chifandi Oboforibo with us. He is a product management um, executive and uh, they both went head to head on the show yesterday at 5 o'clock if you missed it listen again on our website nigeriainfo.fm or via the app uh, the Nigeria Info app download it from your app store if you use iOS download it there if you use Apple uh, if you use um, Android download it on your Google Play store L- look for the um, listen again um, bar listen again category listen again uh, link click on it 
check out Hard Facts and then listen to that interview. It was really good. You'll like it. You'll learn some things. But yeah, the battle is still raging. And once again, Governor Muhammad Yahya has weighed in. He has previously said that uh, he opposes state collection of VAT by Lagos and Rivers. And now he has given his reasons why. He says, quote, if they are granted the opportunity to collect VAT, what are we going to do? We must wake up to the reality on ground. If income from VAT ceases, the state government will be unable to pay salaries, end quote. He also said that 35% of Gombe state government's revenue was from VAT. 35%. So for some state governments like Gombe, this is almost like an existential crisis. If they suddenly don't have access to revenues from other states, they cannot even function as a government. The question is, is this a good enough reason to continue with the current system? Should it be Lagos State's problem or River State's problem, for that matter, that Gombe State cannot pay salaries without federal distribution of VAT? Meanwhile, Governor Wike says maybe states can help each other. But first, states like Gombe should stop doing gra-gra. They should first admit that the current system of sharing VAT revenues is illegal. He said, quote, some people say, be your brother's keeper. I have no problem in being my brother's keeper. But why not come out and say, let us all tell ourselves the simple truth. As it is being provided in law, who is the person responsible to collect VAT? When you agree to that, that it is the state, then we can sit down and look at the different problems of states. And not to say be your brother's keeper while you're doing an illegal thing in disobeying what the law says you should not do. You don't even need to be a lawyer to know that VAT is not in items 58 and 59 of the second schedule of the 1999 constitution as amended. Everybody knows that. It is not even in the concurrent list. Therefore, it falls under the residual list. It is not arguable. That yesterday, nothing happened does not mean that today, nothing will happen. Or tomorrow, something will not happen. End quote. I feel like Gibson Wiki and uh, Chief Obofurubo were in a meeting together because Chief Obofurubo was essentially saying the same things on the show yesterday. You should listen to that interview, really. It's on our website, nigeriainfo.fm. It's interesting that Wiki mentions the exclusive, concurrent, and residual lists. We had a, uh, that lively conversation. And Wiki is saying that it's there in black and white in the Constitution. And if you are assessing the matter fairly, without politics or sentiment, you will see that the states alone have the legal right to collect and assess VAT. Do you agree with uh, Wiki? Mwike also says that the current system encourages laziness. He said, quote, Nigeria should encourage states to be strong enough to have resources to develop their states. We are in a federal system where we are practicing unitary system. Everybody at the end of the month will run to Abuja to share money. Nobody comes back to the state to think, how do I develop my state? End quote. Again, I feel like Wiki and Taiwo were in the same room together in a meeting because Taiwo made some of these points yesterday as well. Seriously, listen to that conversation from the Big Heart Fact yesterday. But uh, let's hear from you. You've heard from these two governors. What do you think? What do you think about uh, the Gombe governor, Yahaya, saying that uh, without uh, uh, general VAT distribution, he cannot pay salaries? What do you think about Wike saying that if states want others to be their brother's keepers, they should first acknowledge the current system is illegal? Women call me on 01465-7190, 01465-7190, and then um, 0700-993-993-993. That's our number for our male callers, 0700-993-993-993. Let's talk to Ojoko. Ojoko is in a cotton Welcome. Uh, thank you very much for calling us. I switched up my radio. Yes, welcome. Thanks for calling us. Okay. Uh, if Gombe State says that uh, they don't have enough money apart from their VAT to fund their state, then it should be a state in the first place. 
we should have been like that. Uh, every in Nigeria campaign to be a state. I want a lot of people campaign to be to the states. They all had much said that uh, they, they can fund their state that they have resources. So they should go back to what they were time that they can fund, they fund, they fund their state and implement those uh, measures. Otherwise, the state should be managed with the nearest states so that they can fund themselves together. That's all I have to say because that's a good state uh, proposal. Okay, Ojoko, thank you very much for calling to say it. 99.3, hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm What's your name? I'm Isaac. Isaac, welcome. Yeah. So on this uh, on this question of VAT, uh, let all governors should collect their VAT. If a, if, if, a, if a state doesn't uh, have enough uh, uh, resources to pay its staff, its, its staff, it should join another state. Like my own governor now, like my own state, we have a large quantity of farmland that if um, uh, if my governor have uh, want to uh, uh, you know make produce a very big uh, farming uh, the product, they will, they, will, they, will, they will have enough enough um, revenue from there and other things, other resources, other natural resources, and they are there just doing nothing. They will collect the public back and went and sit down in their in their houses and eat it all. They won't even uh, empower farmers. Farmers, farmers would go around buying the fertilizer by themselves, and everything is is, is very high in, in the market. So I don't think I don't think uh, collecting general back is, is even important. They should just go go and sit and, and think of what to do. Okay, thank you for calling us, sir. Anonymous is on the line. Anonymous, hello. Hello, thank you. Good, thank afternoon. good afternoon. If I want to remain anonymous, that, I'm a regular listener to your program. That's fine. And today is the first day I'm calling you. I'm glad. Okay, thank you. Mm. So coming to this, uh, some states saying that they cannot pay salaries mm. because uh, they are not sharing the VAT. Mm. My suggestion is that uh, they should merge. But states that can't afford it should come together and form one state. A state that can pay salary for their workers, and they keep splitting these states. A state not productive, you split it into three and be counting the number of states you have up north. So mm. they should just come together and form one state so that we know the real number of states that are productive in our country. Mm. And not every time they keep forming local government, forming splitting states that are not productive. Mm. Counting the number. If you want to do anything now, they will tell you, we have the number, we have the number. They should come together and form one. Okay. Thank you. Anonymous, thank you so much for calling. 99.3, hello. Ah, oh, sorry about that. Call back if you can. 01465-7190. That's for our women. For men, 0700-993-993-993. We've got WhatsApp as well. So share your thoughts via WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. It's uh, 18 minutes now, past 3 o'clock. If you just tuned in, the Gumbi State Governor says, without VAT from other states, he'll be unable to pay salary. That's our first story on the big three today. Biodun is in a solo. Hello, hello Biodun. Hello, good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome. Go ahead. Okay. Um, my problem is that um, a lot of the comments that we've been hearing, mm. a lot of the reactions are based out of passion, and we are not really asking the right question. Okay. Um, I'm of the opinion that um, if we are saying states should match, mm. Why should they match? If they match the cake in the bigger states, it becomes smaller. We should be asking the right questions. And the right question to ask is that workers should be laid off. Workers, should be, workers should be laid off? Work. Yes. Okay. Okay. If you check a, a typical budget of a state in Nigeria, hmm. about 70% goes to recurrent expenditure, which is basically salary and emolument. Hmm. So how do you reduce that? You reduce that by laying off workers. So we should say the right things. We should say the difficult things. Hmm. And that is the implication of this. This is where we are going to. Perhaps I think only the Southwest can merge and come out of it better because of Lagos and Ogun that is present. Okay. The, the other regions cannot merge and come out of it successfully. And um, to end my own point, okay. perhaps we should also call for fiscal responsibility at the local government level. Okay. 
maybe the local government should now stand up and say, we want VAT coming to our own local government too. We want a larger share. Okay. There's no evidence that says that if governors receive more money today, that they will do better. Mm. So we should support this, but at the same time also support um, democracy at the local government level. The local government has been left totally bereft of what they can do. Okay. And that is why we have insecurity in some parts of the country today because there's no lo- there's no government at that level at all. Mm. So I welcome it, but it should trickle down to the local government level. Okay. All right, Biodum. Thank you very much for calling. 99.3. Hello. Hello, Sandra. Thank you for calling. What's your name? Hi, Alex. Here. Alex, um, good to have you on yeah. the show. Yeah, how's it going? Very well. Okay, so um, the last call has took my mind partly, Okay. right? Okay. Um. I don't think it's, it's only salaries that these people cannot pay for. Okay. I would like to add that they can also not pay for some of their frivolities. Okay. Yes, because you'll be shocked to find out what some of these governors do with their money when they get their money from Abuja. It's not just salaries. I think he's just trying to sound decent by saying, oh, we can't pay salaries. Come on, there are a lot of things that you also cannot pay for, and that's good. It's normal for a, for a, for a society that wants to develop. Okay. Assume these people, these uh, states were countries of their own. Would they really walk over to Chad and start to shout with their plates in their hand that they cannot take care of their country? Yeah? Okay. It's time to sit down and think of how you can be productive. You know, he said, the last caller said that we're not asking the right question. It's not about merging or any of those things. Mm. Go back and, and consider what you have been doing with your money before now. And then let's look at it like capitalists. How do we make you productive? Okay. If you are a country, how do we make you productive so that you can become useful to the other countries, in quotes, mm. around you? If oh. you're going to lease your land, then lease your land. If you're going to do, you know, you have to come up with something. All right. All right. Yes. Alex, thank you very much. It's interesting that Alex says that because I've seen lots of uh, think pieces that have been put out since this VAT um, uh, battle started to rage. And um, you would be impressed by the quality of thought that everyday Nigerians have put into how states um, that are not generating or uh, enough VAT at the moment could generate VAT uh, with their states, how they could actually get into the trenches and make their states viable enough uh, to attract the kinds of businesses that would want to set up there. And, um, uh, you know, incidentally, those businesses could convert to VAT for them. Nigerians are very brilliant, very brilliant. Uh, You know, it remains to be seen, of course, whether the uh, people in leadership will see a lot of these uh, 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 thoughts out in the open because they're open it's open source you know if i hope they see it and i hope they they can incorporate it 99.3 hello 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 thank you for calling what's your name my name is mercy good afternoon mercy good afternoon welcome uh, my contribution is fine some states cannot pay right. just like what other people have said right they can merge yeah, so it will help them to sit up. They can uh, think of how to improve their state. If it's uh, maybe not side, they can think of how to rear maybe a cow, how to do uh, all these agricultural products. They think of how to do it in a bigger way so that they will be competing with people in the South. Some in the South can think of how to improve their own products too, in order to uh, be viable, in order to pay salaries and to cater for other things. Mm. They cannot be waiting for other states to be working for them. Then they will go to Abuja and share. It's not fair. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mercy, for calling us. If you just tuned in and you're wondering, ah, what are they debating on Nigerian for this afternoon? Well, uh, the Gombe State Governor says without VAT from other states, he will be unable to pay salaries. He says, quote, if they are granted the opportunity to collect VAT, what are we going to do? We must wake up to the reality on ground. If income from VAT ceases, the state government will be unable to pay salaries. He also said that 35% of Gumbi state government's revenue was from VAT. 35%. 
So like I said, when we started, for some states like Gombe, this thing, uh, existential crisis. If all of a sudden they don't get access to this money again, where other states they generate for their own, they no even feel function as government. But is this a good enough reason to continue with the current system? Should it be Lagos's problem? Should it be River State's problem? Should it be Oyo State's problem? Because Oyo's VAT generation is also pretty good. Should it be Oyo State's problem that Abia or Gombe cannot pay salaries without federal distribution of VAT? Now, I don't know about Abia, but Gombe definitely says that they can't do it without VAT. 99.3. Hello. Hello, Sandra. Thank you for calling. What's your name? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Lota. Well, welcome, Lota. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Gombe State Governor saying that he cannot pay salaries hmm. without the VAT. Please, his workers should go into agriculture. I did my youth service in the north. Okay. And honestly speaking, I was posted to um, local government secretariat. Okay. At the secretariat, every day we go there at quarters, we are the only ones in the whole office. Hmm. Then when it's time for payment or receiving of salaries, hmm. the, the complex will be filled to the brim. Oh, wow. So we now keep asking, where are all these people? If from Monday to Friday... We are the only ones in the whole secretary. Right. It is only when salaries are being paid that they will all come out. Wow. So there's nothing like being your brother's keeper when it comes to sharing of money. If he cannot pay, he should make his workers go into agriculture because they have the land mass. They have a lot they can cultivate to make revenue. That is my own take. All right. Thank you for calling us. We've got a message from Ken who says, Sandra, we all agree that the cost of governance is uh, too costly in this country. So merging the unproductive states to the productive ones would be a way to reduce cost of governance. We can't be creating states by size of land mass. People are saying merge states. <laughs> People have not heard those that say that want to create more states. <laughs> uh, Manny says, Gombe State has the following minerals. Why can't they mine them and create wealth? Why are they being lazy? They've got coal, limestone, granite, lead, zinc, laterite, granite dust, and sand. Manny, thanks for your message. Uh, Sandra, in the olden days... Men marry many wives and hence many children. This is so that they have a lot of hands on the agricultural production, which is majority of the popular professions. The North said that they have the number. They should use it on agriculture. After all, they have land mass. Engineer I.K. Nikbaja says, Yes, but Engineer I.K., how far Enugu? How far Abia State? How far Ebony State? How far Oshun State? You know, should everybody start farming? Everybody can't farm. Everyone can't farm. Hmm? Huh? Let's move on to our second story. Governor Somolu signed the Lagos State anti-open grazing law yesterday. We've been following this process from the beginning. First, the Southern governors agreed that um, their states would each pass anti-grazing, anti-open grazing laws because they believe that open grazing has been the flashpoint for lots of violence in the country. After that, the Lagos State House of Assembly started deliberating on the bill and then they passed it and now the governor has signed it into law. Now, here's some of what the law prescribes. First, it makes it illegal to graze cattle on public land and on land belonging to other people. Second, you can graze cattle in an enclosed area, but first, you must get approval from the State Agriculture Ministry. Third, the government cannot give approval for grazing in a residential zone, even if you want to do it in an enclosed area. And what happens to violators? Well, the government can impound their cattle. There's going to be an anti-grazing task force within the state agriculture ministry with members from the ministry and the police. If your cow cows are impounded, you'll have seven days to retrieve them. Otherwise, the court can auction them. 
If you try to stop them impounding the cars, you can be fined up to 250,000 naira. Anyone whose cattle grazes on or uh, destroys somebody else's property, if found guilty, will pay a fine of 50,000 naira per head of cattle, as well as all the costs of, uh, for impounding and transporting the animals. Anybody found in possession of a gun while herding cattle, if found guilty in court, can be sentenced to 21 years in prison. Possession of other weapons can attract seven years. This is now the law of the land in Lagos. What do you think? The numbers are the same. 0700-993-993-993. 0700-993-993-993. You can also call 01 Four six five seven one nine zero, but that's only if you are a woman. Zero one four six five seven one nine zero. Girls as well. If we have girls listening and they want to call and share their thoughts, call that number two. Men and boys. Zero seven zero zero nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three. We've got Emmanuel in transit. Emmanuel has hung up. Emmanuel, call us back. Ninety nine point three. Very good evening to you. President Sandra. Good evening to you as well, sir. What's your name? My name is Prince Y.S. Calling from Amuodo. Prince Y.S., thank you so much for calling. Go ahead with your thoughts. Thank you. Mm. About the, the first topic. Right. Prince Y.S.? Ah, oh, please call us back. 99.3. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name, ma'am? Um, Naya. Your name is? Noye. Noye, welcome. Good to have you on the show. Yes, my take is a, is a very good one, hmm. passing the bill, but keeping it on, who are the tax, uh, who, who, who will enforce? The enforcement is the most important aspect of it. Well, they said members from the ministry and the police will enforce. Okay. They will make up an anti-grazing task hand, force. I've heard, I, I've heard the Fulani say, if that law is passed, then they will make sure they sell each cow at two million. No, they didn't say they will, they, No, they didn't say they will make sure they sell. They say if the law is passed because it's expensive to feed cattle in one place, cows can become more expensive. The question, of course, then becomes, well, who is paying the farmers where they're eating for free? You know. Yes, but um, can't the governors establish ranches themselves, keep their own ca cattle or cows here? And um, in fact, that will reduce the killings and the harm we face today. The destruction of crops in the farmlands, shortage of food everywhere. Hmm. Mm. Okay. That's the way I look at it. Okay. Thank ah, you. Nonya, thank you so much for calling. 99.3, hello. Hello. Hello? Aw, 99.3, hello? Hello? Hello. Thank you for calling. What's your name, ma'am? Uh, I'm Biodun from Isola. Biodun, welcome. Can you turn your radio off for me? Yeah. Um, I'm far away from there. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Um, I want to speak on the first topic about going to say governor. Yes, please. Like go others have been saying, it mm -hmm. is sheer laziness. Okay. They should look in what? Then the salaries being paid, they are high-ranking officers in the state. The legislators, the governor, then salaries of retired the governors and so on. And the emolument they take, even after retirement, they should, all those things should be put into consideration for them to solve up. That's my take on it. Biodun, thank you so thank much you. for calling to share your take. Let me go very quickly uh, back to WhatsApp, right? On WhatsApp, um, it's easy to make laws, but can Lagos State affect the laws? My question is, what if the destruction made by a cow is more than 50,000? Wale from Ikorodu. It's 50,000 naira per head of cattle. It's not just, you know, per head of cattle. Because they're not grazing just one cow. They're typically, uh, typically grazing a herd, right? So per head. So if you have 20 cows in that herd, 
You know how much it is. Do the math. It's a good law, but the problem is uh, not about the law, but um, it's for Lagos State government to have the mind to enforce it. Because in Nigeria, we have a lot of good laws, but uh, no enforcement. That's a message from Miolenski. Miolenski is in Akute. <laughs> Nigeria, uh, well, Sandra, Nigerians in diaspora need a dedicated number to call in also. It's difficult to call in, and we have a lot to contribute. Your show is vast. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, I have offered um, Skype. I've offered Nigerians and Diaspora Skype. You know, give us a call via Skype. We're, we're going to pick it and we're going to put you across. Our Skype ID is Nigeria Info FM. Nigeria Info FM. Just search Nigeria Info FM on Skype and give us a call via Skype. Ruben and Ikorodu, welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for calling. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I actually want to speak on the on the open and the anti-grazing uh, law passed by the Lagos State Government. Yes, of course. It's a, it is a welcome development. Okay. Because there's been a lot of problems caused by these uh, hard men yeah. in the country. Mm -hmm. And to be frank, the, the, you know, the southern country has been a very good and peaceful place to live. But of recent, it has been a hell living in the place. So for Governor Baba Jide uh, to come and uh, pass that law or sign that law into uh, 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 to sign that law, in fact, I really praise him for that. So I hope that other governors of the South can take a cue from him because he has shown a very good example for others to follow. So if you allow these housemen, you look at the killings everywhere, look at the destruction of crops, look at the destruction of other properties everywhere. So I actually thank the governor for taking the lead and, you know, holding the bull by the horn to pass that law, or to sign the law, into, to sign the bill into law. So actually, I expect other southern governors to emulate him. All Kudos right. to Governor Babajide Sonwolu. Okay, thank you very yeah. much for calling. We appreciate it. Let's take a look at uh, messages we have. Uh, Nia Khan Tom says, I sympathize with this governor. Let the federal government do the needful by spending wisely and stop frivolity. With this money, it can be channeled, channeled into fruitful ventures. Oshunde Otutu Kende says, um, the presidency encourages laziness in the northern divide. Okay. We've got uh, more people with their messages. Juan Ola says, Madam Sandra, you mentioned Oshun on VAT. Oshun also has uh, resources that are yet to be mined. Same as Ekiti. We are feeding the unproductive and unappreciated. Uh, we feeding the unproductive and unappreciated must stop. Okay. All right. 99.3. Hello. 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 Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name, sir? Oh, this is Bayo. Bayo, welcome. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing for um, Governor Sonwolu, right? It's, 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 um, it's not expected anyway. Okay. So it's a good thing. And besides, it's not even the first, um, the very first governor that will do that in South Wales. That's for, for the last four like, or so many years. So Mondo State has done that, Oyo State has done that, Ocean State has done that. Right. So it's a good thing. Let them do that. Because ordinarily, I mean, even because um, they, you know, they will have a long time decadence of impunity, due, uh, what is it called, freedom that they're giving to these people. Like we are getting, these people are doing their business. And also, Hello? Oh, no. Sorry about that. 99.3? Is that Sandra? Hmm? Uh, thank you for calling. What I want to tell you is that may God bless the whole. Okay. I traveled to Abuja three years ago. Okay. There is land bus from Oyo to Kenya that they can farm 39 products that can be exported. Hmm. Coming to other states, are 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 and the Bakati shoe market can feed other seeds. Coming to my seeds, we have palm and the palm canal. Ukuta, reach over it, that can feed the seeds. Anybody that is saying that uh, that will not be implemented is a lazy state. Therefore, I get goats. Kaduna get uranium. Plus, they get 
they get they, they have tin and the column bars are gold. Why can't they go and mine it? Are you hearing? Well, you can't mine it. It's federal government that has to mine these things. That federal government bureaucracy is what is conforming Nigeria. Mm. It is not transforming us. Let us be transformed. America don't don't have anything, but they have been transformed. And see, mm. and the first year, you want to work with me here. Okay. And the first for here. Let them collect it out fast. Concerning IPOP, I'm sitting at home. As I'm calling you, I'm sitting at home in the solidarity of IPOP. Thank you very much. I'm not talking about IPOP, but thank you for sneaking that in there. Uh, all right. <laughs> 99.3, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, Good afternoon. What's your name? Kayode is my name. Kayode, good to have you on the show. Welcome. Yeah. You know, Sandra, mm. uh, you see this VAT issue. Uh, mm. takes us back to a very important discussion. Okay. And that's the fact that governors in all states cannot end the same thing. Okay. Senators in all states cannot end the same thing. Okay. Your state can be poor and you not be able to pay salary and your senators are cashing in, cashing out. Okay. It's not possible. Do you understand? Okay. It, it goes back to the issue of when they said that they pay with more wage, they say they cannot pay the same as rich states. Right. That's the same way they cannot spend. You cannot uh, if if Lagos says go, uh, governor is going out with twenty vehicles, but they say governor cannot go out with twenty vehicles because he cannot afford it. Right. But you can't want to live in a mansion, right. enjoy all the same benefits that others rich states are getting, mm-hmm. and then you now say you cannot pay salary. Okay. It's, it's truly an irony. It's not done. Okay. Every state should live according to... It's a federal system. It's a federation. Nobody should be... You, you should be able to feed yourself. Any governor that says it, it, it can't pay salary, does not deserve to be a governor. You can't have staff in your, in your, in your house hmm. or your office. And you say you can't pay them, then why do you engage them? It's as simple as that, Sandra. Thank oh, you. Thank you very much for calling. Idris is in Agbara. Hello, Idris. Hello, it's Beatrice, not Idris. Oh, Beatrice, I was wondering. <laughs> Welcome, Beatrice. Please, uh, my intake is about the Abia said that said I cannot pay salary because of the revenue. Well, they didn't uh, say that. It was Gombe that said that. But Abia okay. also has poor VAT re- uh, generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. poor VAT gener- They have not been paying salary before, madam. I'm from Abia State. Okay. They have not been paying salary for over how many months? I have brothers and sisters that are working with government that are crying over their salary. Right. So they can generate revenues on their own from the market, from everywhere. They collect bills. Right. They can generate it. Let them wake up. It's time for every state to wake up to its responsibility, not waiting for others to work and for them to eat. They have to wake up to their responsibility, please, ma'am. That's my take on it. Beatrice, thank you so much for calling. All right, let's bring our final story away and then we'll call it a wrap on today's Big Three. We start this show. It's called Hard Facts with Sandra Ezekwesili. That's my name. We start this show every day uh, with three of the biggest stories of the day. Now, if it's a Monday, though, we bring you the stories that broke over the weekend. So all the big stories that broke over the weekend, but you couldn't talk about on radio, we bring it to you on Monday at 3 o'clock. But from Tuesday to Thursday, we bring you the biggest stories of each day. Then on Friday at 3 o'clock, we bring you the biggest stories from all over the world. We choose three and we talk about it here on Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info from 3 o'clock. Now, our final story is Femi Adesino saying that the president is interested in uh, bringing terror funders to justice instead of naming and shaming them. Adesino is, of course, the one of the president's media aides. And um, he's in New York with the president for the UN General Assembly. And he was asked about the prosecution of terror funders, specifically the 400 Bureau de Change operators. Do you remember a few months ago, Adeshina and Garbashe said that uh, the government had found 400 BDC operators who are suspected of funding terrorists. Uh-huh. Since then, we've seen different stakeholders asking the executive to reveal their identities. Even Senator Ali Ndume said that the presidency, uh, presidency should speak up. He's the chairman of the Senate uh, Senate uh, Armed Forces Committee. So yesterday, Adeshino was asked about it again. And he said, quote, Nigeria is not interested in naming and shaming anybody. Rather, it wants to bring them to justice. 
the United Arab Emirates has brought some names and the Attorney General of the Federation has responded to that matter, saying that in due course, all these people will have their days in court. Rest assured that these people would be tried before justice and justice would have its way. End quote. Additional mention the UAE, of course, because their government published the names of some Nigerians that they have arrested for allegedly funding Boko Haram. But this is a separate one, is separate from the claim from the presidency that Nigeria knows 400 BDC operators who are funding Boko Haram. And the criticism has been that making that statement without revealing the names of these suspects was sensationalist. Others have wondered the rationale of hiding their identities. After all, the government usually openly names suspects. So why keep these names hidden? But Adesino's point is that there's really no need to name anybody. After all, don't people always say that we shouldn't be doing trials in the pages of newspapers? So what's wrong with keeping the names and other details quiet until there's a conviction? Now, you've also heard from people like Senator Ndume who say that these trials are not secret trials, that they should be out in the open. Who do you stand with? Who do you support? Who do you agree with? Should the government give an update on these 400 BDC operators allegedly funding Boko, Har Boko Haram? Or is Femi Adeshina correct to say that naming and shaming is just a distraction? Women call me on 01465-7190. Men call me on 0700-993-993-993. Women, 01465-7190. Men, 0700-993-993-993. Let's talk to Moses. Moses is in his solo. Hello, Moses. Hello. Thank you for calling. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Go ahead, Moses. Yeah, Moses. Let mm. me just broach briefly on the three topics. Okay. The first one is, um, okay, let me go to someone who's on. Uh, they are just going out there. Okay. He made a simple rule. Don't pass through express. No one way. Who, who listen to them? I live very close to the express. I papa express me. Mm. You see your car passing one way recklessly. Nobody can arrest them. Mm. Is it those that, uh, that have a head, a headman I can catch? Mm. That's the one. Secondly, the governor of Bombay State should not make a superstar of Wiki. Wiki, I, I'm saying it. Pay my friend Papa in gratuity. He has not paid gratuity. He's busy fighting that all around when there is even a project. So mm. let us go the state governor and the like. Go mm. and work. And stop making him a superstar. What they can never say. Mm. Just recently I read something about just a small section in New York, a borough in New York. What they generate is more than the whole part of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So what is we taking like? And the last one you raised on the... Um, I, think, around. I completely agree with him. Mm. When it comes to the you can't make sensation out of it. Mm. Naming and shaming is just like beating them on their palm. Mm. Let them do their work thoroughly. After all, they said they were going to catch a, a man that was running his mouth, kill them, born Nigeria. They did, they did it in a covert way. So anything is security, it has to be covert. Mm. They don't have to shout about it. They will do their job. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Moses. Uh, you know, I'm looking at a table that uh, is showing me what each state generated between January and uh, August 2021 and the allocation to those states. Abia State generated 2.290 billion era and um, they were given 20.020 billion as VAT allocation. The VAT that Abia generated, 2.290. The VAT that Abia was allocated, 20.020 billion. Adamawa, 3.689 billion, and they were given 22.260 billion. Aquaibom, 8.39 billion, they were given 27.749 billion. So again, this is not a, ah, the North, the North. This is a general problem. There are very few states that are pulling their weight small. Just small, just pulling their weight small. Let's talk to Uche in Surulere. Hello, Uche. Yeah, um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, based on the three topics, yes. of course, I want to start with the one of your big state. Okay. That's Gumbi. Yes, can mm. you hear me, please? Uh huh, go ahead. Yeah, you see, the problem with um, these governors is um, they already have plans to come and take money okay. for personal use. Okay. 
the truth about it is that uh, the northern Nigeria is highly blessed. It's just that the, the dogs don't want to look inward, particularly the leaders. Consider the fact that it, 70% of what we consume, even in the south and around Nigeria, is we get it from the northern Nigeria, I mean the farm produce. Is it that they cannot even, even this cow, open grazing of this and that? I, by the way, I said this northern state, particularly the, the Gombe itself, to have one of the largest, uh, what is it called, farmland where everybody can even bring their cow. They can take that from all these things. They just don't want to do anything. They just want the free money coming in. The truth about it is that uh, let all states collect their VAT and remit to the federal government what they need to give them. It's time. It's just somebody talking about their state. Ariaria alone, Ariaria, I'm from, I was born in Aba. Ariaria alone, as on the market in Aba, if Aba is well planned, like the olden days, mm. can take care of their state completely. Not to talk of what we are seeing today. Open grazing should be bound in every state so that these people can see the need. Like in Lagos State, now, Lagos State can open a farmland. If you want to go and rent it, you rent. So they can even get back from the, the cows. Okay, look, look, um, say, look at uh, the, the, the first story you raised about publishing the name hmm. of these guys. Mm-hmm. The truth about it is if they have made their investigation and said that these 40 people are sponsoring the, the terror, terrorism in the, within this area. Please, they should publish it. It's not when it's IPOB or um, Jodudua or this that they will grow and publish. They should publish the name. Let's see them. At least when they know that this, let, let everybody go to court and, and clear their names. Tomorrow, the, the who, is, who is who will call and their names will be excluded from the, the innocent ones to be persecuted at the end of it or we hear anything about it. This is Nigeria, and it's unfortunately the country in the world with the climate and everything. Even I hear the leaders too, it baffles me because people like UK, America, they don't even have one to your program. Thank you very much, Uche, for calling. I'm still looking at this uh, VAT and VAT uh, Cross River, 2.347 billion, and uh, the allocation that they've gotten, 20.478 billion. Benway, 1 billion. And the allocation twenty four billion, uh, Ebony seven billion, Edo eight billion allocation twenty two, six billion nineteen billion, Enugu five billion allocation twenty billion, Gombe four billion allocation seventy billion, Imo, uh, one billion. Allocation twenty five billion. So I hope you're seeing. Yes, you have said. Oh, we can't pay salaries without VAT, but Enugu. Gombe is 4 billion, Enugu is 5 billion. Kano, that we can use as example, generated 24 billion. 24 billion. It's doing better than a lot of southeastern and southwestern states. Katsina at 3 billion, and they received 31 billion between January and August 2021. Let me take a few more thoughts. 99.3, hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello, this is Alicia from Nikorogi. Welcome. Good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. How is your baby? It's, it's going very well. Yes, what Arishima is saying, I think he's talking in the uh, side of his mouth now. Okay. Because they were the one like, we see them, we know, this, uh, we, 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 we know those that are sponsoring this. Why is he not saying that they want to do justice to them now? Why is it? If you come out for somebody that is a spokesman for, for the president, that's one. Then Sandra, hmm. hello. Yes, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Sandra, hmm? I, I want just a minute on Friday. I have not been paid it. On Friday? <laughs> yes. On whose show? On whose show? Yes, I'm the one that won. On whose show? On whose show? On whose show? I'm sure they will pay. Did, did, they, did, they, did they take your details? Yes. Okay. If I, if I, this morning, Sherry called my name. Then, Sandra, it's quite unfortunate. 
uh, thinking the anti-open grazing law and VAT passed by the Lagos State Government is actually meant for her citizens. No, it's a face-saving method adopted by the master to draw attention to 2023 elections and NSAS issues that have been a big blood stain on this government of Songolu. If truly he's a real Lagosian and has Lagosian's interests at heart, let him name and shame those responsible for a papa gridlock. Secondly, let him have the law on Okada's along the restricted areas that Leki and Ifri. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Otowu Friday says... Femi Adeshina said they don't want to make public the sponsors of Boko Haram. It's a clear evidence. It's not. Why has UAE made public the names of Boko Haram sponsors? For VAT, it's high time everybody answers their name. Let the lazy governors step down if they cannot perform. All right, Otto Friday. Uh, Robert says the North and South should work together on WhatsApp. Let's take a look at more WhatsApp messages. Sandra, the government... Uh, Hold on. In Nigeria, it's not a secret to reveal the names. In, to reveal the names in Nigeria is pure secret because if they name them, there's a possibility that some members of the administration might be sponsoring Boko Haram. As for VAT, let every state collect their VAT. That's a message from Kenneth in Shasha. Kenneth, thank you very much. P Master from Yanogoro says, Sandra, I dare, I dare Femi additional to mention the names of the Boko Haram sponsors. Nothing will happen, mark my words. How long did it take them to declare and block the NSAS sponsors? All right, let's take a look at more messages via WhatsApp. Dear President Sandra, 70% of the BDC operators of Nigeria are not Nigerians. They are from neighboring countries comprising Niger, Chad, etc. They even registered a bank in their name until when Lagos and other security agencies discovered their evil plans. Our government is not sincere. Let them repent. That's a message from Devo. Of course, I cannot prove what Devo just said to us. Devo, you would need to bring proof of that. Uh, Sandra Gavara Samolu is so poor in implementation of laws and enforcement of laws. Common waste, disposal management, traffic laws, etc. He has disappointed woefully. This law on herdsmen in Lagos is futile. That's a message from Teddy. Teddy is in Satellite Town. Hello, Teddy. Thank you for your message. Sandra, just have a good look at receipts of goods and services bought from two states in the same nation under the same law. Some are working and some are just eating. Is it fair? Engineer IK in Ayobo with that message. Sandra, VAT has opened up the true status of Nigerian states and the conspiracy of reinventing Nigeria is here. Odom with that message from uh, WhatsApp. Agueros collect billions in indirect tax. We're silent. Do we seriously think increase in VAT will bring any positive development to Lagos or Port Harcourt? This has nothing to do with restructuring. These are political mafias fighting to get more money. How come these governors won't allow local government autonomy? Oyim from Finland with that message. Oyim, thank you very much for your message. Well, incidentally, a local government autonomy has been taken you know, off the governor's hands now. So, well, let's see how it goes. Huh? Let's let's pay attention to that. Let's see how things go uh, from here. Um, Sam says, the issue of VAT should naturally help resolve the long-standing discussion of each state controlling the national resources in their authority for revenue generation. All right. And then the final message says, our government collecting VAT is enabling the lazy states. It's time they wake up and smell the coffee. How on earth can PMB say he's not interested in naming the sponsors of of terrorism. Mm. Pioye there with a question. Uh, Ezekiel from Ijagun says most of the states that cannot pay salaries are from the north. Actually, Abia State isn't paying salaries. River State is owing salaries. Um, I'm sure if we go to if we go around, we'll find a number of states owing salaries. Business and they should learn words and become products that of crying helpfully. Let's bring you business news. After the business news, we'll hand you over to Chukudi Ezugu, who is out in the field today. I'm Sandra Ezekwesile. We keep you informed 24 7. Do they understand what the constitution is all about? They're supposed to be the ones that would say, okay, well, you can protest, but don't do this, don't do that.